Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer podcast. My name is Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica. And it is the 8th of March, 2020, and we have lots going on today. So I'm going to first say hello to everyone at Elastica who did my website and who who work at Elastica because they are always listening and they are faithful listeners right here in Costa Rica and they are a very fine design and architecture firm. So if you're looking for design, say hi, elastica.nu. And that's not an ad. (laughs) That's just a hello. So my friends, anyway, we have a whole lot to do today and there's a lot going on, a lot, a lot, a lot going on. So I want to start with the full moon, which is going to be tomorrow, and it's going to be in the afternoon if you live on the East Coast, 1.48 p.m. on the East Coast. And where we are right now is the sun is conjuncting Neptune. So the sun is part of the full moon. As we have said before, the sun is opposite the moon, and the sun is with Neptune, which makes this a very psychic, powerful, intuitive period. Okay, so the days leading up to this and then the days after. The sun coming to Neptune only happens once a year and they are in the sign of Pisces and so this is highly, highly intuitive. And when we start to tune in to the feelings of Neptune, we start to get into the realms of the unknown and the intuitive and the 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 fine line between what is truth and what is a lie and what is imagined and what is completely real and what reality is versus what is fantasy and how much and what do we believe in and so we have this fine line when we're dealing with Piscean energy, especially when we get this double stamp of it with Neptune and we are completely either tuned in or we are spaced out or we're, you know, just completely scattered. The idea is to tune in. The idea is when you have a heavy dose of Neptune like this, what you want to do, and since Neptune is part of the full moon, because it's the sun and Neptune together, and then the moon is going to be, you know, in Virgo opposite tomorrow, what you want to do is you want to focus really, really a lot. And I remember when Neptune came to my sign a number of years ago, it was complicated because you felt like you were driving in the fog. And what happens when you have to drive in inclement weather? You have to drive carefully, slowly, and in a very focused manner. You got to turn the radio off. You have to focus on the road and you cannot have another conversation going on. And nowadays, you know, people text and drive and everything, which is unsafe. But, but I remember feeling at that time when Neptune came to my sign that it was a real focus and what inevitably happens is you become an expert at what you're doing you become so focused and so clear because you are forced to by Neptune and so when we have a sun Neptune like this it helps us to tune in to focus to go in laser sharp when we're going to meditate or when we're going to try to get some answers from within and and those are the best things to do right now with a sun Neptune because otherwise you know if you're trying to like comb through the fog with your hands and you're you're like in the murky waters of Pisces you aren't going to feel like you are completely getting what you need you're going to feel like well is this the truth or is it not the truth you know when you watch a movie and Neptune rules film when you when you watch a movie it's like you're believing that story. You're in that place. You are in that countryside with those people, in that amazing scenery and beautiful landscape, and you're feeling the emotions and everything. Really, they were on a set, and they're telling you it's, you know, the Alps, and it's really Canada, <laughs> and 
it might be filmed on location, it might not be, but they're on a soundstage, even though they're looking like they've got Italy outside their window. And, <laughs> you know, this is film. It's an imagined world. And so when we are watching film, we don't think about the soundstage and the director yelling cut. And this is the fourth time they had to do this scene. And then they decided to cut it, you know, a little bit shorter and tweak it here and there. And then you know, add things and trim the dialogue. And we're not thinking about that. We're thinking about the story and how it's speaking to us. And so this is the fine line of Neptune. Is it real? What is the reality? And what is the truth? And then what is truly um, imagined or, or in another world? And so Neptune allows us to pierce the veil of illusion, you know, that it's presenting to us, but also, you know, you know, if you're focusing really hard, but also have that creativity, have that imagination. You have to spend time in those places if you're going to do anything creative. And when I talk about creativity, I don't mean that you have to take a painting class or sculpture class or anything like that. I'm talking about you know, we create our own lives, we create our what's in front of us, everything in front of us is this projection like a film, and we have the choice what to edit and what to keep in. So when we have a full moon, Virgo is the in, where the moon is, and it's a very um, basic, fundamentally earth-oriented sign. It really is detailed and organized and it really gives us that picture of you know getting our ducks in a row and and there are times when we really do have to focus on that stuff especially especially when we are dealing with you know so much capricorn in the sky and virgo moon so this is you know they're all sort of supporting each other and the moon will make good relationships to the planets in capricorn tomorrow um most of tomorrow, <laughs> there's going to be all this, you know, moon trine Mars, moon trine Jupiter, moon trine Pluto from, you know, seven in the morning to 930 at night, Eastern time. And then in the middle of the night, Monday night till Tuesday, it's going to try and Saturn because as we know, Saturn is at the end of Capricorn. So what we're, what we're dealing with is, you know, the reality and the detail and, and the organizational skills of Virgo and the but then we're also dealing with how we feel and what our emotions are telling us. So we have to balance the head and the heart. We have to balance our mental analytical skills because Virgo is highly analytical and Pisces is highly intuitive. So balancing the two of them is is very important. And so when we get to this point of working with this energy, we have to just make sure that we're not carried away in either direction. We, you know, we might be hypersensitive to the to the moon because it's full. Um, if you live with a full moon in your astrological chart, you're going to feel these. It's a recurrence every month for you, no matter what sign it's in. But the interesting thing is that we really, really have a strong a pull to the unknown because Neptune, an outer planet, is involved. And when an outer planet is involved in a lunation like this, while it's not an eclipse, it's still very much about connecting to the, uh, the outer planet's forces and the outer planet being, you know, the, uh, at the center of this. And so what we're dealing with is we're also dealing with Venus and Uranus, which conjunct earlier today, and um, the Sun Neptune was earlier this morning, but it's still really in effect because of that full moon. But Venus and Uranus is another matter. Venus is in Taurus, one of her favorite signs, and when she connects with Uranus, she is completely uh, in another realm. You know, she's connecting with a deep level of brilliance, genius, and chaos, and perhaps not so much about her um, groundedness in Taurus, her grounded feelings in Taurus. It's, it's taking her to another realm. So again, we're dealing with an inner planet, Venus, meeting an outer planet. And so that we have two of those today. We have the, the sun meeting Neptune, 
you know, and this, these are conjunctions. So they're meeting and they're greeting and they're staying together in the same place at the same time. And so Venus, when she comes with Uranus, is very strongly attached to things that are completely, um, completely, uh, you know, off the beaten path, outside the box, things that we don't feel that we... Uh, have a grasp of sometimes and there are days like this when you do get Venus Uranus and you're like wow I can really grasp these very complicated matters and these complicated subjects and I feel like I'm really deeply connecting with this if you're reading something that's very very intense or very um uh, complicated and maybe scientific because because Uranus really rules the sciences and some far out stuff. So you might have some far out Uranian uh, experiences, which is like, you know, you fall in love with someone who's like an alien <laughs> or you realize this side of you that is, you know, very independent and there may be a part of you that says, hey, all I need is me. And that's that Venus Uranus is very, very independent. If you live with Venus and Uranus in your chart conjunct, then this is a recurrence for you. And whatever was going on in your birth legend when you were born, that story that was behind the scenes that was going on in your family's life, because it was just another transit for them, even though it was your momentous birth, um, it was, you know, the Venus Uranus experience uh, for them was something, you know, you know, a little, uh, maybe the get, the conditions to, to get to the birthing room or the hospital were just off the charts. Well, ah, we were caught in traffic and you were born in a taxi and a, those kinds of things. Um, and so unusual stuff happens to Venus Uranus people. And these are people that need a lot of freedom and independence. And these are also people that need to be um, very much, uh, you know, having, the, having a certain amount of relationship freedom and relationship um, autonomy. So they're not people that are they're not, it's not that they can't cuddle and be warm, because especially if, you know, now we're in Taurus, you know, um, anyone born now is going to get a Venus Uranus in Taurus, and it's not that people might not be cuddly or warm or anything, they might be very much that, but they definitely operate well when, you know, they, they have, like, absence makes the heart grow fonder, so that's, that's part of Venus Uranus. Now, we have this full moon, and then happy days tomorrow night, big time, big news, Mercury finally goes direct. <laughs> After three weeks of torture in the murky waters of Pisces, it's very interesting because last Wednesday, and if you listened to last week to the podcast, you heard me talk about Mercury switching back into Aquarius, retrograding back into Aquarius on Wednesday. And Venus going into Taurus on Wednesday. And I felt a noted shift in energy that day, for sure. And it's <laughs> the, especially with Mercury leaving Pisces and going back into Aquarius, that is one strong shift. Again, here we are with the Pisces Virgo axis. Mercury likes Virgo. Mercury is a planet that rules Virgo. And so when you put it in its opposite sign of Pisces, it is not entirely thrilled. It can, it functions, obviously. But the difference is remarkable. The difference of its shift out of Pisces back into Aquarius, which is, you know, it doesn't rule Aquarius. It likes Aquarius because it's analytical and it's an air sign and Mercury works well in, with air signs and, and analysis. And it can, it can handle Aquarius very well. And it's, you know, a lot of planets can't, I mean, you know, it's, it's Aquarius. I mean, it's, it's an offbeat sign and here we are with Uranus again, but so now Mercury is in Aquarius and it's it's talking and it's letting us think and, and analyze when we need our analytical skills, especially when we're doing, you know, complicated math or science or something, or we have to do our taxes or any of that. It puts us in the frame of mind for that. But wow, you know, um, it's it was such a notable shift because of this Mercury so, so lost in the waters of Pisces and so intangible and, and so um, 
just you know sifting through the 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 ocean <laughs> and the turbulence of the waters um and it's interesting because you know mercury never even got to where neptune is it just it retrograded early on in pisces and it stayed in the early degrees of pisces for a long time it really didn't reach that but neptune's like at 17 and it didn't get there so it will get there eventually like you know in april and and but it's so so clear that this was it was a shift so use this time mercury is going to be retrograde until t- it's not direct tomorrow morning it's tomorrow night at <laughs> it can't be any later right 11:49 p.m. eastern time now people change their clocks today and in the united states and I am in a land where, in Costa Rica, where we don't have daylight savings time. And so I am now two hours time difference. I'm in the mountain time zone from Eastern Standard Time. So 11.49 p.m. for those on the East Coast, I'm going to get it at 9.49 p.m. So I'll have some few minutes left in my day (laughs) to appreciate Mercury going direct. Pay attention. Pay attention to what Mercury tells you, because remember when we went from January to February, Mercury was leaving Aquarius and going into Pisces. So there might be something that you shift from from back then. Maybe there's information from those days that, you know, you were using, working with, understanding, um, and maybe Mercury gave you some information then is going to build on that information in the next couple of days as it's stationing and stopping at you know, about 28 degrees Aquarius. And it's going to go back into Pisces. It's going to take another week to go back into Pisces. So it's been in Aquarius since last Wednesday and will take till the 16th to go back into Pisces. So enjoy this week of analysis and enjoy this week of Mercury. If you need some, if you need some brainiac energy to guide you through your work or whatever project you might be dealing with or, or conversations you're having or research you're doing, this is the week. Use that Mercury for the next week before it goes back into Pisces next week. Um, and then it's going to you know, scoot out of Pisces and eventually go into Aries. Um, But in the meantime, Saturn is at 28 degrees of Capricorn and Pluto's at 24. And what's starting to happen is that Saturn is getting ready initially to leave Capricorn. And that is some interesting stuff because Saturn is in its own sign and this is an important thing that we need to talk about because um we are going to have a big planetary shift this month and saturn is going to start its journey into aquarius on the 21st of march again late in the day 11 58 p.m eastern time on the 21st of march which is a saturday and the 20 the 20 no actually the 19th is when the sun enters aries so this it's going to be in the spring equinox and it is actually a uh it's a little bit early sometimes it's on the 20th or 21st but it's it's the 19th this year um so the sun will be in aries and really when saturn goes into aquarius this is a different this is a different situation so let's explore this um, when Saturn gets ready to leave a sign, Saturn will start to kick up its heels and get irritated. <laughs> and that makes us irritated. And what, and what that means is it's in its own sign. It's in its rulership. It's in its place, its home place. And Saturn starts to, we start to get impatient we start to feel like something is dragging on and on and on and we don't know why and we don't f- and we don't know exactly what it is and we don't know what could potentially be um so mm, uncomfortable now we're going to start to feel this about now and until the 21st is, and you know mercury or saturn is going to go 29 and then it actually um you know mercury 
going direct is going to sort of make us a little more aware of this. So we're going to start feeling like Mercury's, oh, okay, I feel that now. Because Mercury's going into Aquarius, you know, is in Aquarius and is going, you know, sitting there. And so there's a lot of Aquarian energy that's going to be vibing this month. Um, actually, three different planets are going to be in Aquarius this month because Mercury's there now until next week. Saturn's going to go there on the 21st. And then Mars is going to go into Aquarius on the 30th of the month and immediately hit Saturn. So, and that's another matter. Um, however, when we are dealing with Saturn going into Aquarius, it is in another sign of rulership. So Saturn used to rule Aquarius before Uranus was discovered. So for so many hundreds of years, the ancients assigned Saturn to Aquarius. And so Aquarius can be a little Saturnine. So Saturn's not entirely uncomfortable in Aquarius. It tends to like being in Aquarius. But when Saturn gets ready to leave it feels like forever. It feels like we are just on the same treadmill over and over again. And please, God, let this be over. I need some fresh energy in my life. So that's what it's going to feel like. Now, this is the first foray. Saturn's going to leave Capricorn, go into Aquarius, and then go retrograde in May and stay in the first couple of degrees of Aquarius, only get to two degrees Aquarius, turn around in May and go backwards, backwards, backwards until July when it goes back into Capricorn. And then Saturn's going to stay in Capricorn and it's going to eventually go direct in Capricorn. It will not meet Pluto again, um, but it's going to go back into Aquarius in December and then Jupiter's going to catch up to it. Now, more on that later. Saturn when it goes into Aquarius is going to give us this fresh energy and it's this is a very profound entrance into Aquarius for a variety of reasons number one it hasn't been there in 29 years you know it was it went in there it went into Aquarius in the early part of the 1990s and then left by 1994 was done with Aquarius okay so it's been many many years and if you were around then and you were experiencing anything you know, you, you can remember what it was like to have Saturn in Aquarius. Maybe you were born with Saturn in Aquarius. So that's number one. Number two, why this is important is Saturn is going to introduce us to what is going to be the, the early stages. Saturn in Aquarius is going to be what we call a precurrence of what it's going to be like to have Pluto go into Aquarius in five years. So the rumblings are going to start. Pay attention, make notes, take a journal, um, Saturn going into Aquarius is going to prepare us because by the time Saturn's getting ready to leave and leave Aquarius two and a half to three years from now, um, Pluto's going to be at the end of Capricorn getting ready to go into Aquarius within a couple of years. So Aquarius is the sign of the genius, the brilliance, the, the unconventional, the revolutionary, the group, the commune, the club, the... Um, community. Aquarius has these altruistic utopian ideals. Let's all live in a community and barter. Let's not use money. Let's let's all be barterers in a in a commune, and we can live off the land. <laughs> Saturn and Aquarius says hmm, that's a nice idea. Okay, but here's what's not realistic about that, and we'll show you all what is not realistic about your group, your community, and and whatever. Um, the third important thing that's going to happen with Saturn going into Aquarius is it's going to meet Jupiter at the end of this year, and they are going to meet for the first time in 20 years. Saturn and Jupiter have not met in Aquarius in, you know, in my lifetime and, in, and maybe all of the 20th century. They did not meet in Aquarius. This is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Saturn and Jupiter coming together at the end of Aquarius is... I mean, at the beginning of Aquarius, at the end of December, is a very big shift. And again, we're going to get a handle on utopian ideals that are going to be called into question and called out by Pluto going into Aquarius around 2025. So this is a very important ingress. And an ingress is when a planet enters into a sign. So Saturn goes into Aquarius, and this is the ingress of Saturn into Aquarius. And so you may not feel, you may be ready for Saturn to get out of Capricorn, 
But then there's also going to be the period at the end of this year where Saturn is going to be in the end of Capricorn again. And it only really goes up to 26 and, and comes back, turns around and comes back. So anything that we've been living these last this last month or so is really where where we might run into Saturn again. But when Saturn goes into Capricorn for that last time and starts those months between the station retrograde when it will actually when it goes back into Capricorn in July and then it's between the time that station's direct in the autumn in the northern hemisphere the autumn that's going to be hard not hard like oh my god my life is ending that's going to be like oh I am bored with this every day feels like the same old treadmill when is this energy going to break when is this going to feel different and that's going to come when Saturn goes into Aquarius in December Saturn will leave Capricorn be finished with its own sign until you know another 30 years or 29 years but a little sooner because it takes two and a half years to go through the sign but we are going to see this ingress. This ingress and the dogs here are barking like crazy. And maybe they have something to say about Saturn and Aquarius. Who knows? In their own language. Um, but, but it's really important. It was really important to pay attention to what happens when Saturn leaves Capricorn. Watch what happens in these next couple weeks. And then when it goes into Aquarius on the 21st. And pay attention. It's only going into two degrees Aquarius. If you have a planet within the first couple of degrees of Aquarius. Or maybe the first couple of degrees of a fixed sign. You will feel this strongly. And you will feel it immediately. When you. Uh, if you have planets later. When you get to December, if you have planets later in fixed signs, then you're going to feel Saturn and Jupiter um, together. That's going to be a remarkable experience. Um, and we will talk more about in the weeks and months to come. If you would like to learn more about Saturn and Jupiter, I do have a video available on the year ahead, 2020. And it is about... Uh, an hour and 15 minutes long. It's $15. You can buy it on my website, um, thegoldenastrologer.com. Just go to book online, click on that, and scroll down, and you will see where it is for purchase, and I will send you the YouTube link where it is hidden. This is um, an important time in astrological terms because we are dealing with the ingress of this Saturn um, going into Aquarius. And then we're going to start talking about Jupiter and Pluto, which are getting very close together and are technically conjunct, but will be exactly conjunct on the 4th of April. So Saturn at Aquarius is going to be, you know, it may be some calling into question the realities of your community, of your group, of your ideals, of your utopian thoughts. Um, it will be a quite now, you know, there's a lot of division I know in the United States over elections, <laughs> and um, you may, United States has a, a, an Aquarius moon, and it is a late Aquarius moon, so Saturn won't get there for a while, but the interesting thing is that Saturn, is, you would think that Saturn is going to help us focus on the group and the community, but initially when, when a planet goes into a sign, especially like Saturn on out, you know, Saturn... Neptune, Uranus, Pluto, they, they start to, it starts to bring up all the holes in the space of what is going on in the group in the community. And so the United States, I know in the last several years has been divided every time there's an election in it. And perhaps there will be less division this time, or perhaps there will be, there will be like initially much more division and well, the election will occur with Saturn and Capricorn, but it will be really, it will be a turning point because of Saturn going into Aquarius and that Saturn Jupiter. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that all turns out. And I feel very glad that I'm in Costa Rica. And, but it's, it's going to require a coming together on some level. Saturn in Aquarius, you would think, well, that's more divisions in the group dynamic. It could be, 
but it may it's extra work for everyone to get on the same page. So maybe everyone will have that realization that this is not the way to go. Being divided ain't, ain't good, and we need to come together. And that can happen in your book club, in your astrology group, in your, you know, bridge club, <laughs> in wherever that you may see a division, whatever groups and communities you look forward to. Seek to unite. And this is a really good time to look at that. Where are the holes? Where are the divisions? Where can we unite and be together and on the same page? And that's an important lesson. Because Saturn's always a lesson as we go into Saturn and Aquarius. So I'm going to leave you with that thought for the most part. Otherwise, the moon is busy in Virgo. It goes into... Libra on Tuesday the 10th, 6 in the morning Eastern Time. It goes, it stays in Libra and it's void for a very short amount of time uh, before it goes into Scorpio on Thursday the 12th. And it'll be in Scorpio all day the 12th, pretty much, the 13th, pretty much. And then the 14th Saturday, it's void of, again, a very short amount of time before it goes into Sag, and then it's party time all day Saturday, all day Sunday, 14th to 15th, moon is in Sag. Nice time to relax with friends, go take a little trip, travel, expand your horizons, go do something different. Um, this is the last weekend in this first part of the year with Saturn and Capricorn for a few months. So, and then Saturn's going to move into Aquarius the following weekend. So that's almost two weeks from now. So, uh, in the meantime, there's not a whole lot of void this week. Terrific. Um, and that means we can get a lot done. So a lot accomplished with Mercury and Aquarius, a lot accomplished with a lack of void moons. Get your paperwork done. Get your ideas out there. Be, cre be a creator in your life, of your life, and join us again next week. My name is Deb McBride. The Golden Astrologer is the podcast, as is the name of my website, thegoldenastrologer.com. My Twitter is at Deb Astrology, and my YouTube channel is also The Golden Astrologer, and you are welcome to go watch videos there. Um, and if you have the desire to get an astrological session with me, you can sign up on my website. Just go to book online and you can also get an astrocartography report there. So I thank you for listening and have a lovely week.